<laughs> well, I thought this review would work out a lot smoother because I came home from work one and a half hours ago. It's now 11 p.m. and I thought I would be more chilled, more relaxed, which usually works out quite good for me. And I just wanted to get this done today because actually I planned on making the review tomorrow. But I, I just can't wait to talk about this phone because it's so amazing. It's so fantastic. It's pretty much the best all around phone. Period. It doesn't matter if it's a flagship or a mid-ranger. But there is one thing that I personally don't like so much that most of you, I guess, won't care. And then there is one thing that I personally don't care about that you could not like so much. What one or the other is, we will see in the full review. So bup, 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 bup. let's switch the cam. Here is actually the one thing that I don't like so much. It's this sharp edge of the beveled edges and it's hard to see and I can't really show it any better because there is some shine on it. It's just not smoothed out at all. It is quite sharp on the back, I get it, because so to make a nicer, let's say, smoother transition towards the style shells and I completely get that, even though it still wiggles a little bit. So if you, as you can maybe see, it moves a little bit around. I personally didn't use that so much because it didn't really add any grip. I actually think glass on glass for me is more grippy. It doesn't really feel any better. So if you want it, then it makes the device thicker. So that's why I prefer all devices naked. And I like the glass and it feels especially very great, especially the one on the front for some reason feels so nice and smooth and doesn't really attract too many fingerprints or they kind of fade away quite quickly. So that I like. And I also like this super high quality build because this device, you can bend it as much as you want. It feels so sturdy and so solid. I absolutely like that. It's all, of course, a little bit thicker than most phones, but it has a huge ass battery. And that is something that I just absolutely know to appreciate. It's not though the smallest 5.5 inch. I've definitely already used 5.5 inch phablets that were noticeably more compact. So this one is bigger, but it is what it is. Like I said, the only thing that I don't like here so much is the bulkiness that I could accept since I'm just not a phablet fan in general, but the sharp edges and maybe I would actually polish them slightly smoother, but let's get that out of the way. The rest here, of course, we have the LEDs and the camera. On the top, we have the microphone, SIM card and SD card tray. Left side is blank. On the bottom, we have USB type C. The headphone jack, a little bit awkwardly placed. I would prefer it here, but it's fine. And on the right side, we have the slightly awkward buttons because a little bit more higher than I like them and a little bit small, but absolutely fine because the tactile feedback, the audio feedback is absolutely nice, but you actually don't really need the power button all that much because you have the fingerprint reader on the bottom that I absolutely like. The position is nice and it works super reliable. It's quite fast, absolutely no problem here. And it feels natural for me. That's just a really nice place. You have actually Somewhere here around you have a notification LED, but it doesn't really work as a notification LED. For some reason, I think I plugged it somewhere in and then it turned on. I'm not really quite sure because you have the kind of adaptive display or the motor display that I have turned off just for the video because I personally don't like it so much. But as you can already see, the bezels are in the smallest ones. But if you can guess past that, that is pretty much my only complaint. There is one second one that I don't mind though. I will get into that later though. So let's talk about this really, really nice display. 5.5 inches AMOLED and it is 1080p, which is absolutely fine because it is a really nice and super high quality display. I didn't mind it not being maybe as crazy sharp because LCDs at 5.5 inches at 1080p are usually sharper but this one absolutely is great and i absolutely love the quality and the calibration of this display because the white point is really set nicely and what you still have as an option is quite nice even though i didn't need it in the display options you have the options to choose the color mode if you want the standard more realistic one or vibrant where we have a little bit more boosted colors but i actually have to say they are really nicely set because i didn't really find them to be oversaturated or anything it is also bright enough absolutely also dim enough no problems here at all. i really like the colors they are vibrant punchy and vivid but definitely not over the top or something like that and really pleasing of course the viewing angles are super stable so it is a wonderful display that's all i have to say i absolutely like it and it's worthy to be on a flagship device even though this is nominally not one Okay, now let's talk about the speaker.
yeah, all I can say, speaker, maximum volume, absolutely fine. There are a few louder ones, especially with front facing stereo speakers. This one is just the mono front facing one, which is absolutely fine though, because maximum volume, I never found it not loud enough and usually actually used it at maybe like 80%, which is top. And the volume, or the, I mean the sound balance is absolutely, actually, <laughs> actually absolutely fine as well, because it's not quite flat or weak. It's not maybe super bassy or super rich, but it is nicely balanced. So I never had a problem with the sound. It really was nice. And one thing that I did not expect to be that good is actually the headphone jack quality, because it's definitely noticeably louder than the average headphone, actually quite loud. And it sounds absolutely super nice, super nice. So I definitely like the sound in overall. And the more impressive thing is actually the headphone jack, which was fully pleasing, which is something that I definitely don't say very often. Okay, let's talk about the performance. Let me kill off the apps. You can do this here. And then let's launch a few and see how quick that works. And maybe this doesn't seem crazy fast, but it is how smooth, how consistent, and how just overall pleasant this performance is. And I've said this already on my review of the Nova from Huawei with the Snapdragon 625. And here, this one works even better because as you can see here, scrolling, Perfect. I've not seen this any time any way better on any phone. It doesn't matter that this is not a Snapdragon 820 or anything like that. The performance is on the same level in the browser. So here you don't lose out on anything. And if you check this, wow, you can flick as fast as you want. There is pretty much no lag at all. And I have no idea how they managed to do that because I've even seen Snapdragon 820 phones not perform that smooth. So they kind of used some magic here. I just don't get how they achieved that because even Google Plus, as you can see, extremely battery smooth. And I would actually say, and I did that already on Twitter and said that the Snapdragon 625 is my SOC of the year because it's super efficient and crazy powerful. I just don't get over the fact how great it performs. And with the three gigabytes of RAM, the multitasking is super snappy. As you can see here, there is absolutely no problem. The device is also, as you can see, here, very responsive. I can switch through my apps. And by the way, for everyone always asking, this is with, done with Smart Task Launcher, as you can see here. I absolutely love this app and I love this performance of this device. In general use, it is not distinguishable from a smartphone flagship. It's, and I get overly excited about it because I've used this phone for over a week and you could have told me this is on Snapdragon 820. I would have absolutely believed it. There's no difference. And even in games, if you check all of those, with a 1080p display, you can push this absolutely brilliantly. The frame rates are on a high average level. There are pretty much no drop downs, no frame drops or any lag or anything. It's just overall performing smooth. And sometimes even better than most of the flagships since those push QHD displays. So whatever they did in general with this phone, not just with the normal use, which is absolutely brilliant and amongst the very best. And that's why I would call this a flagship, even though it's not one. The gaming performance as well just proves that once again, so Motorola, whatever you did, you did an amazingly crazy job. Now, the next thing that I want to hype again is this. Look at that, one and a half hours, and I actually made a point instead of a double point at the 1.3 hours. One and a half hours for a full charge with the included quick charge, which is great, but look at the dead value. 60 minutes of YouTube, 7%. And this already is an indicator for what this phone is mostly known for. It's insane battery life. And okay, I have to just show a few of the things and maybe just before I sh before I find it, because I absolutely hate the Google Photos app because finding something here is very, very hard. Okay, let's get through a few values here. As you can see here, one day and six hours nine hours of screen on time. And this with a brightness of 35 to 40%. Absolutely amazing. Here, once again, 36% used over three days and freaking six hours of screen on time. And the day ended with eight and a half with pretty much four hours. This already is four hours since I came home from work these many times. So <laughs> if I would have to kind of say what I think it will get. Over the course of one day, you should get close to 10 hours of screen on time. I would say at least nine. Over the course of two days, even in mixed use, nine hours should be no problem. And 
even over three days, like eight and a half to maybe nine, because the standby drain on this phone, no matter if it's on mobile data or on Wi-Fi, is pretty much non-existent. We have this big battery with this super efficient chip and the optimization on Motorola's work that I almost don't get. Sometimes, okay, yeah, sometimes the dose mode seems a little bit aggressive because I did not always get all my notifications on time, which I don't mind so much. I don't need it always in time. But the, the battery life, if I can expect this phone to be a three day phone and I still get almost nine, like nine hours or something like that, it's just mind boggling. And one day on Wi-Fi, I guess you could get like 11 hours. It's, it's crazy. I don't want to speculate anymore i absolutely love the battery life now in terms of software what is there to show off i like one get gesture that is the quick cutoff auction uh, um, gesture where you get the light of course you get the same here for the camera as you can see here these are actually quite handy gestures especially the one for the flashlight i use actually quite a lot the rest though is pretty much stock you can rearrange those since you have as you can see here the system tuner if you go in there of course we have moto display i've already talked about it i'm just not a big fan of that i guess you all know what that is and i don't really have to show it off because what it does is if you lift the screen off or the display you will see your notifications and so on i personally just don't really mind it so much the rest is pretty much absolutely stock here as you can see here it's themed completely stock and it looks completely stock and it behaves mostly very stock. There's like, like some minimal tweaks like the color mode and the additions. The rest though is stock Android. This should result in very fast updates and in a stable, quite fast, minimalistic this, um, the, um, software in terms of the resources and they did a wonderful job and it's noticeably everywhere. Battery life, the clean UI, this, the, the performance, I guess you get the fact that I'm a little bit hyped about this phone, but not overly. So let's get into the next thing, the camera. And this is what I've said is that one thing that others maybe don't like so much that I could not mind more or yeah less because as you can see here, the pictures aren't really all that sharp. Definitely not really impressive in my opinion. It can produce, as you can see here, some nice pictures. But overall, as you can see, here, there are some disaster ones like this one here. I don't know what it did here. Same as for here. Here it got a little bit better. But overall, if we take a look at the low light conditions, this is with the flash and actually without it almost looks better. <laughs> which is really, really odd. And I have to actually say, low light capabilities are actually off, on the better side compared to the rest. And I've mixed up the pictures because I usually make them in the right order. I forgot this. So yeah, it's okay, I guess. It's after all 11 p.m. And I, I'm i okay with that. Okay, let's look at these pictures. As you can see here, I'm just not happy. And what happened a lot on this phone, I don't know why. As you can see here, I have the same picture twice. And no, I have this one, uh, this one as well. And the next one as well. And what this actually was was confusing me because I thought, wait, I didn't make so many pictures of these here once again. But what it actually is, if you maybe just hold the, the trigger a little bit too long, it make a kind of shutter burst. And that's why I have so many pictures twice. As you can see, also not a great picture. This one is actually really, really nice and it is HDR. So it works out quite fine. So it can produce, I would say quite good, almost very good pictures, but that's pretty much it. I'm sometimes just missing the details. The focus is reliable, as you can see here. Don't really mind the glare so much. I had very harsh sunlight these days because I took all the pictures before afternoon, but it can produce great ones. So like I said here, forget the, the lens, for it's fine. But here it can produce really nice pictures, but there wasn't really one picture where I was blown away. I find them usually a little bit in general, a little bit too soft. Colors are fine, exposure is actually really good. It's mostly someone who prefers over sharpening that I was maybe so happy. If we take a look at the selfies, as you can see the harsh sunlight, this is absolutely pleasing, totally fine. <laughs> yeah, I am not the chosen one. This was just the sun, as you can see here. But yeah, I like that picture. Of course, the lens flare is very, very obvious, but it's very sharp. White balance is usually quite fine. But there is, once again, this odd little burst shots. Indoors, actually, also very good. Absolutely fine. If we go a little bit longer, you can see indoor shots here actually are not that grainy, quite sharp. Colors are fine, so not bad, not bad. And let's take a look at the video. This should be the 4K video if I'm not mistaken. Let me just quickly check that, the double. 
nope, this is 4K. And the 4K video actually is quite smooth, absolutely no problem, it's 30 frames per second. And the only thing that you will see now in the sun, that there is some quite noticeable artifacting on movement going on. But this is only visible if you have like big one colored objects, otherwise it's absolutely fine, you don't really see it. But therefore the autofocus works quite fine, absolutely okay. It's maybe actually smoother than on 1080p, which I will show you in just a few seconds, because it works actually quite smooth. Of course, as you can see on movement, there is this artifacting going on. But the autofocus works quite reliable and quite smooth. And the picture actually looks nice. It is nicely colored, nicely balanced, quite sharp, overall smooth. But let's actually switch to 1080p now, so I can show you the one thing. Of course, you know, in general, it doesn't look as sharp. But what you will also see is now at the, in the sky that there is quite some obvious jello effect going on. So everything is wobbling a lot and the autofocus itself, as you can see, this is weird. The autofocus worked way slower and had this one pump action, which is just something I don't like. I like a more subtle, as you can see here, there is this one pump and you will see this in a few seconds again. I prefer a more subtle, maybe slower focus, but therefore one that is a little bit smoother. Here we have this odd little one pump and in general I would just say stick with 4k and you will be happy so all is good let's end this here switch the cam back and let me tell you one thing again just real quick for pictures it's a little bit of a hit and miss a little bit of a mixed results you can get quite nice pictures not ever really impressive ones but also not all that often super disappointing ones so it's it's fine but I am a little bit disappointed because the rest of the phone is so amazing that here it falls a little bit short video is actually quite fine so let's get to the pros and cons and as you can see this is I think the only phone with these little cons so let me quickly get through the pros so I can give you my overall concepts high quality build I've said it it's built so sturdy and great of course with the glass on glass, but you also have the shell if you want to protect it, so all is fine. Reliable fingerprint reader, yep, absolutely. Fingerprint reader doubles as a power button. This is something that I didn't even show. If you press longer, it just closes, and this kind of diminishes the use of the power button. Absolutely fine. High quality display, really. This is fine, even for a flagship, because it's so nicely calibrated, which is more important for me than just the resolution or anything else on a screen. Loud and clear speaker, absolutely. Flagship level performance, and yes, this is just something that I did not expect, because already the 625 on the Huawei Nova performed really good, but this here is even a step above, and this just shows that the optimization on Motorola side is even better. Insane battery life, it's crazy. I could talk a lot longer about it, but I guess you get it. Two days even for the hardcore user should be no problem, and three or four days for most people should be no problem. Enhanced stockish Android camera can be quite good. Motor mods, you have those, even though I did not have anything to review here, but you have the, you all, you know all of these, I don't have to talk about it. But what is important for me, great modless experience, because I use this device as it is, and what I always said for the Moto Z review, if anyone does it, I want them to review the device as it is because the device on its own has to deliver, which this one does. And I never really needed that. So just as it was, the experience was absolutely great. So let's get to the minor flaws here. It's bulky. Yes, for a 5.5 inch, it is a little bit bigger than a lot of them. There are a few ones that are as big, but yeah. And then the sharp edges that I still think I would even polish off. And then one of my main complaints would be gone. Aggressive dose. I wouldn't really say that's a real problem for some people. Yes, so I just wanted to mention that that's why it's in brackets and then mixed camera results. This could be one thing that if you want an amazing flagship, you should go for something else. Maybe like, for example, the Moto Z, but I don't care. And that's why I would say this is, uh, so I don't want to say it wrong. The best all around budget buster flagship monster phone. Because I don't mind that this is on paper not a flagship. It's maybe just a premium mid ranger priced at around 400. But if those qualities that I've talked about are important for you, and if you can live with not the best camera, and you don't mind the phone being bigger because maybe you want a 5.5 inch screen and the sharp edges are something that you can use to, or you will use a case anyways, th this is gone. And this means this is a phone. If those problems aren't problems for you, you get just once again, you get a phone with so many pros. And I even took some off that it's almost unbelievable how much you get for this. And uh, I didn't review the Moto Z. Maybe I will do it or not because I wasn't so interested. I was interested more in the Moto Z Play because 
I don't know, this phone does everything and a lot of things way better than a flagship or at least on the same experience level because the display. I don't see any benefit from an even better screen on a flagship because this one is super enjoyable. The speaker is better than on most flagships. The performance is on the same level as on phones you pay a lot more for. And yes, yeah, something like the, um, the X7 maybe has a maybe even better performance even though in normal use most people won't notice a difference if you don't have them side by side. Yeah, so you get it, this is on a flagship level, but you don't really miss out on anything and you get the crazy battery life. So of course, something like the Exxon 7 is a legit competitor. It's priced at around the same level, slightly better display, slightly better sound, okay, front facing and so on. The camera, I would say, is better, but it doesn't have the battery life here because this one has almost double of the Exxon and it does maybe feel so great, but if you don't really mind the inner field, but therefore want to stock Android, which really great is in terms of updates and enhancements and you want the Moto mods that are also still available. <laughs> How can this be beaten? So I sound very impressed and overly praising this phone, even though I personally have one gripe, which is the build or the edges. But <laughs> I'm usually someone who picks about the design when no one really cares because people want, and I totally get that a phone that does everything well. And this does it more than well. And the price at around four, 450 is absolutely legit. And I think you don't, or you won't find any phone on the market right now that offers more for this money. If the camera is not really important for you, because where will you get the flagship performance with the way above flagship battery life? with the display that is absolutely fine, with the build quality that is absolutely high quality. And yes, I'm starting to repeat myself. I think you've got the message. This phone is highly impressive and that's why I took a few more, more, more minutes to get this done, just to make that clear. This phone, wow. <laughs> yes. This would have been it. I think I've covered it all way too long already, actually. So I hope you liked this review. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, leave anything down. And no, Motorola did not pay me for this review. I like it as it is. And yeah, I will do the German version now. Hope you liked it. Until next time. Bye.